at the time of this video, it is 2018, and in the world of Sonic figures, we have come a very long way from 1999. Sonic figures were never really a thing until the early 2000s, and, you know, were kind of non-existent in the 90s for some reason. Like, yeah, you had the McDonald's toys, and if you were in the UK, you had these, I don't know, miniature statues, but in the world of figures, you kind of had nothing. Since those days, Sonic figures have been made by four different companies. I'm going to refer to these as, uh, the Big Four. Resaurus, Toy Island, Jazzwares, and since 2014, Tomy. All four of these companies made Sonic figures in different styles, sizes, and varieties. And today, we are going to look at each one of these four companies' Sonics, because, you know, someone had to do it, and that someone's totally going to be me. Do note that because I don't want to make a horribly long video, although by the time I'm done editing this it will be, I will be focusing on the mainline Sonic figures. So figures such as the Nendoroid, the Joyride Adventure 2 figures, and the other miscellaneous figures won't be counted here. So let's get the show on the road. It's Resaurus vs. Toy Island vs. Jazzwares vs. Tomy, or simply the history of Sonic figures. Let us first start with Resaurus, after all, they were first. The Resaurus line of Sonic action figures first came out in 1999 to coincide with the release of Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast. Sonic had a fresh new look, and it was up to Resaurus to capture that look in the physical form. 3D was still relatively new at the time, so Resaurus had to ask themselves, do we model our figures off of the in-game models or stock art? Eventually they settled upon stock art, and if you look at their Sonic, you can clearly tell. In fact, just look at Sonic next to the box art for Sonic Adventure. I can literally put him in the exact same pose from the box. The Resaurus Sonic stands around 4 inches tall, and his original release came with a gold ring, a base he could stand on, and a Sonic sticker. None of which I have, because I bought my figure secondhand. You can see here Sonic has a unique design. His hands have nice sculpts with interesting designs, such as fingers are bent in different ways. His shoes are kind of sloped up, not really basing off of the box art, but to make it look like he's running when you put him in a running pose. To this day, the Resora Sonic figure came with the most accessories. His spikes have a kind of strange triangular design to them, and his eyes are maybe a tad bit big, but overall, this is a great Sonic figure. Really captures how he looked in the early 2000s. The only downside of these figures is they are relatively fragile, and since Resaurus as a company went under, they are rather expensive to try and get. Within the last couple of years, their price has gone down. I remember a time when someone wanted $300 for a Sonic. Nowadays, out of box, with no accessories, you can find Resaurus Sonic for like 10 bucks if you're lucky, and at most 25 to 30. In box, however, he can go for much higher prices, ranging anywhere between 50 to 80, and depending on the condition of the box, sometimes even 100. Sonic collectors to this day still say the Resaurus figures are the best Sonic figures ever, and we'll get back to that. But I think people really like these figures for more reasons than just saying, oh, they're the best. I think it's because secretly, we're all a little bitter, and say these are the best to cope. You'll note that as this review continues, most of these companies had the Sonic license for a good amount of time, but Resaurus only had it for like two to three years. They were planning a much bigger line, and were getting ready for an Adventure 2 toy line. That would have been awesome! But, unfortunately, the company went under, and we all agree this figure line was taken from us way too soon. But, we now move on to Toy Island. Toy Island got their license to produce Sonic figures in the 2000s, while Resaurus was still doing their line. Toy Island figures were sturdier and larger, standing around 6 inches tall, and they too came with accessories, again, none of which I have. What started out as a Sonic Adventure toy line quickly turned into a Sonic X toy line. This is where Toy Island really got their fame. As you can see, my Sonic isn't in the greatest of shape, but you know why? This was my very first action figure of Sonic. I got him for Christmas in either 2004 or 2005. This figure is a huge portion of my childhood. He went everywhere with me. He'd sit on a table next to my bed, he'd go in the living room where I would play, he'd even go in my backpack in elementary school even though toys weren't allowed. Shh, don't tell anyone. This Sonic figure went through a lot with me, and I love it. But I must be honest, he is one of the weakest Sonic figures in the history of Sonic figures. His sculpt is pretty atrocious. Look at his kind of fat body, his super awkward spike sculpt, and his stupid looking face. Everything about him 
just looks so weird. In the Toy Island line, Sonic originally came with a few golden rings and a snowboard. The rings were magnetic, and interestingly enough, so were the bottoms of everyone's shoes. So when you ran your figure along, it actually looked like they were picking up the rings. That's pretty clever. When the figures got re-released for the Sonic X line, they dropped all their accessories in favor of some plastic chaos emeralds. These figures were much sturdier than the Resaurus line. These were certainly toys kids could play with, unlike toys for collectors. One gripe I always had with this figure, however, especially as a kid, is their limited movement. What's one thing every kid wants to do with a Sonic figure as soon as they get it? Gee, I don't know, could it be making him look like he's running? If that's the case, why exactly can't this Sonic figure move his legs back and forth? That's like, the most important thing about Sonic. All he can do is move his legs to the side. I can kinda make it look like he's running, but looks more like he's tripping. Unlike Rosaurus, these figures didn't have shoe and wrist joints. You could not move these figures very well at all. Along the way, Toy Island made a few more variations of Sonic, such as this one right here. This is one of my favorite Sonic figures and was part of Toy Island's Sonic X Megabot line. While posability wasn't something Toy Island was very good at compared to their older brother Rosaurus, Toy Island usually sculpted their figures in specific poses so they could look way cooler. In fact, Toy Island's last Sonic toy line was called the Super Posers, which got a super limited release before being discontinued. These figures boasted 25 points of articulation rather than the average 5 to 6 points most Sonic figures had. But when Toy Island lost the license, a new company came in and helped out, and I think we all know which one that was. In 2008, in steps a company called Jazzwares, who made a figure of Sonic the Werehog for a Sonic Unleashed tie-in. Afterwards, they got the permission to use sculpts from Toy Island and re-released the Super Posers with much better quality plastic. Now, collectors and fans could finally get their hands on a super posable Sonic figure, and for a while, these were what people called the definitive Sonic action figure. Hundreds of people used these for stop-motion videos and collectible figures for shelves. But technically, these weren't Jazzwares' molds. It wasn't until 2009 when we got one of the most universally praised Sonic toy lines in the collecting fandom, the Sonic 3-inch line. Now, I actually sold almost all of my Jazzwares figures a few years back, so I had to borrow this Sonic from my friend, and it turns out he only had the Sonic from the 3-inch Black Knight set. Besides a different sculpt for one hand, this is the exact same sculpt as their basic 3-inch Sonic, so we'll just be looking at this. Jazzwares managed to do the unthinkable. They basically made Super Posers with a few less articulated points and on a much smaller and affordable scale. And for the first time, they made figures of characters besides Sonic Tails and Knuckles. We got characters like Amy, the very first Metal Sonic action figure, Jet the Hawk, Silver, Blaze, the list goes on. It was a dream come true for Sonic fans. This was the very first toy line to actually make people question if Resaurus was as good as we all remembered. Sonic had 14 points of articulation and was only $6. This figure would be re-released many times in bundles, comic packs, and with accessories. His original release, though, came with no accessories. However, Jazzwares made another Sonic figure line. This was called the 5-inch line, and while many other characters were planned for the line, all we got was Sonic and Classic Sonic. Again, I own, like, no Jazzwares stuff at this point, but I do still have this 20th anniversary 5-inch Classic Sonic my girlfriend got me back when it was new so I kept it in box. You can see that the 5-inch figures were borderline upscales of their 3-inch figures and once again had lots of articulation. In fact, Jazzwares made a whole bunch of Sonic toy lines, but I think it's important we narrow down on what toy line is most synonymous with the brand. That's why I didn't talk much about Toy Island's different toy lines or Resource's 10-inch Sonic. Again, I can't make this video too long, and it's universally agreed Jazzwares' 3-inch figures are what they're remembered for. One problem with Jazzwares figures, though, was the very poor quality control. Resaurus may have been fragile and Toy Island rather sturdy, but Jazzwares? Well... Jazzwares brought about many paint errors, wrong packaging, and they all had a tendency to break very easily. Sonic characters in design have very thin arms and legs, so these would snap super easily and sometimes be very hard to put back together. Towards the end of Jazzwares' run, quality control went completely out the window. 
The last few months they were producing, they gave us some of the most poorly designed and painted figures ever. They did not go out with a bang. They silently disappeared. For the first time in over four years, we got a brand new, modern Sonic action figure line. These figures were going back to Sonic's 2010 design and were trying to be the new, definitive Sonic toy line. So in steps Modern Sonic, Tomy's very own Sonic to compare to the other three companies. He stands taller than the 3-inch line just by a little bit, but also slightly below Resource's 4-inch height. I actually don't have a whole lot to say on this figure, as I just did an extensive review of him in my last video. But if you haven't seen that, I'll try and recap what I said. His articulation doesn't even compare to Jazzware's Sonic. In fact, his articulation reminds me of Resora Sonic. He can move his arms and legs back and forth, arms can also move up and down as well, and his head can turn. While he may not have amazing articulation, when it comes to figures, I care more about if the figure looks good compared to if it plays good. And guys, I'm being serious. I think this is the most accurate Sonic figure out of all the ones we looked at. I know, a lot of people are going to be angry I said that, but let's be real here. This is what Sonic looks like now. The resource figures had style, sure, but Sonic doesn't look like this anymore. In fact, I'd go as far as to say he didn't even look like this in the adventure games and Resaurus took a lot of creative liberties. And the Jazzwares figure? Yes, he is great for stop motions and looks awesome and is a great toy, but Sonic's design just doesn't lend well to super articulated figures. In Toy Island, well... Okay, well, we don't have to worry about Toy Island, but yeah, I think the Tomy Sonic is the most accurate Sonic figure out of this entire lot. His limbs are not chunky, his face looks great, and he looks like Sonic today. Now that's not to say any of these figures are bad. I know each company's Sonic holds a significant meaning to many collectors. For example, even though I said I think the Tomy Sonic is more accurate, I still like the Resaurus Sonic over this one. Each company's Sonic had a unique style, while Tomy's Sonic just looks, I don't know, normal. Which isn't bad, but he just doesn't stand out much either. As Tomy continues to grow, I expect to see more Sonic figures in their future. And perhaps one day, we will look back on Tomy the same way we looked back on all of these. Well, here we are folks. A Sonic figure history video literally years in the making. We have come such a long way, and I always thought it was important to compare and contrast these figures. Like I said in the video before this, I don't mind having like a hundred different toys of the same character, because when a new company steps in, they always do something different. It's really cool to see the evolution of toys and a character through the years, and this is a video that no one has really done before, so I'm glad I got to step up to the plate and do this. Whether you're a die-hard Resaurus fan, grew up with Toy Island, experienced childhood with the Jazzwares figures, or are new to collecting and chose Tomy, one thing is for certain. Each of these companies' additions to the history of Sonic toys are unique, important, and above all else, vital. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.